Merci, merci Ernst. Euh, bonjour à tous, euh, bonjour à leader euh, social-démocrate. Mesdames et messieurs, je suis très heureuse de pouvoir vous parler aujourd'hui euh, des discussions d'hier à la table ronde. Mais euh, étant donné que la table ronde était en anglais, je vais passer à l'anglais. In our discussions yesterday afternoon on democracy in Europe, we had a consensus that democratic Europe is in trouble. It's in trouble with the citizens, it's in trouble on policies, on its processes, and in terms of its politics. So first, in terms of the citizens, pro-European views are on decline among citizens. There's, an in, there's a rise in Euroscepticism on the left, on the extremes of the left, on the extremes of the right, but also amongst moderates on both sides. There's a loss of trust. There's a restricted definition of solidarity. Uh, it's focused mainly on the economics, primarily on loan guarantees, and doesn't really focus at all on issues of social solidarity. The, with the increasing rise in socioeconomic problems, we see an increase in nationalism and populism. All of this results, primarily panelists agreed, from a lack of leadership, or rather the wrong leadership that there's a conservative and political view of the social, uh, sorry, a conservative political view of the solution to the Eurozone crisis with unending budgetary austerity that simply doesn't work. So it's a lack of vision in the EU and especially a lack of a social democratic vision. On top of this, if we think about the view from outside Europe, uh, from the US and from the BRICS, Europe as a whole, the EU, has lost the admiration of the rest of the world. It is no longer seen as a regional model of integration. So that's the views of the citizens and from the outside. Now in terms of policies, um, in, in terms of what we discussed, we agreed that the EU needs to be given the means to be more redistributive. It needs its own financial resources, not just a Tobin tax, but perhaps a VAT on cross-border transactions, and even, I suggested, a solidarity tax, so that no one says, oh, we don't want to transfer union, but have all citizens contribute. But at the very least, if one doesn't go that far, at least make the structural funds work, which are there for redistributive purposes. But most importantly, the EU needs to deliver, and for this, it needs to change its policies on the Eurozone crisis and focus on growth. So that's on policies. On processes, the crux of the problem is that the EU has become extremely excessively intergovernmental and technocratic. In terms of the excessive intergovernmentalism, this is about the Franco-German couple, or perhaps it's just Germany. Uh, this doesn't work. This is not democratic. There's an imbalance in the institutions. There, there are also problems with the rules, the unanimity rule. The fact that this is all done via treaties means that you get delays, you get individual countries that can stop the process. Um, tremendously problematic also that individual countries may make rules for the rest, uh, for example, by calling a referendum on EU issues and thus de disenfranchising the rest of EU citizens. Or, where an argument is that there's a constitutional court that needs to be uh, taken into consideration. Okay, beyond this, and perhaps even more importantly, is that the European Parliament is sidelined. You need the European Parliament not only to make legislation, but also for debates, so that you can talk about the problems of the left and the right. This is about legitimizing politics. It's about changing politics, but also about legitimizing politics. Beyond this, what about the European Union Commission? There's no more community method. It's all about technocracy and, it, and automatic, the administration of automatic rules. And even more problematic is the assumption is that technocracy is the most legitimate of processes, but in fact, it's a really problematic if it's not legitimated politically. And on top of this, if, if the technocratic decisions are seen as oppressive 
or is biased. There's a complete loss of credibility in the EU as a whole. On top of this, and this was one of the um, commentators on the panel who said this, so the real problem is that the intergovernmental decides increasingly not just on the content of policies but also on the mechanisms so that it gives no leeway for the EU itself to govern. That is highly problematic. And so it means that the EU Commission can't tailor policies, for example, in terms of the economic crisis, can't tailor its policies appropriately to the differences amongst countries and instead has these automatic rules. So essentially on the um, processes, one needs to rebalance all the institutions, the European Parliament, give it more power to discuss, to debate, and in particular in terms of the Eurozone crisis, but also rebalance the Council and the Commission. And finally, in terms of politics, <laughs> finally in terms of politics, it was clear that, that in, on, in the panel that the democratic problems are certainly at the EU level, but they're also at the national. It's, there needs to, national governments need to, wait, need to find ways to bring citizens into the decision-making process itself. Intergovernmentalism is not just about leaders making decisions, but it's about leaders not making, de making decisions without bringing in national publics at all. But on top of that, if the national is, if at the national level we have increasingly policy without politics, as more decisions are being brought up to the EU level, at the EU level we have policy without politics, or at least policy masquerading as without politics. In fact, it's very political. And uh, what we need to do is ask, how do you make, how do, how do you bring in policy with politics? And for that, it's the question is, how do you politicize so as to legitimate? And here the experts were divided. Some said, um, politicize and change the policies. Others said, wait, 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 there's a risk if you don't solve the po policy problems first and then politicize. But in any case, what one needs to do is think about how do you bring the debates, the social democratic issues and debates to the fore. And for that, perhaps, one does need to have presidential elections for the EU Commission, um, primaries for European parliamentary uh, elections in 2014. And basically, it's not just about electing a leader, although that is important, it's also about debates, about democratic debates. It's about, it's about bringing the issues to the public. And And for this, and I end here, we need leadership, more social democratic leadership. Thank you.